Hello, I've just spent a bit of time this weekend updating my watercolour tins. I'd organised them so that I'd got all my half pans in these two big tins. And then I'd got two smaller tins, one that had my Rosa Gallery paints in and one that had my Roman Schmuel paints in. And I decided that I wanted to amalgamate them all. So now my tins are a mixture of half pans and whole pans. It's quite nice because now they're in exactly the same order as all the paints in my swatch folder. Instead of having them spread out across four tins, which are Derwent pencil tins, I've now got them in these three. But it did mean that I needed to redo all the swatch cards. I put on an audio book and thoroughly enjoyed myself. It was also nice just to go through and paint out literally every single one of my watercolours. I'm really excited to have the Roman Schmall and Rosa Gallery paints mixed in because I don't think they've been getting as much use as they otherwise would do. And doing this was a nice reminder of some of the great paints that they have. So today I just wanted to carry on doing a little bit more swatching and I've decided to pick out some of my favourite granulating watercolours. I can get real enjoyment from doing this without even having to paint anything recognisable. So I thought I might as well video it in case any of you are interested in granulating watercolours too. I'll pick out 24 just because that's how many squares I could fit on my paper. And this is Beo Hong cold press paper. So first of all, I've picked out Schmincke's Galaxy Pink. This is a mixture of PV16 and PBR33. I was thinking actually it might be fun to try and mix some of these up myself where possible just to see what the closest I can get to it is. So this might actually be a longer video than I planned. So where I've got the same pigments I'll have a go at mixing them up. So for PV16 I've got one in the, in the form of Roman Schmaltz manganese violet. And then it's PBR33, and I have got that one as Schmincke's Mahogany Brown. Oh, that's looking quite close. I do want to swatch out Roman Schmoll's manganese violet on its own though because I think it's got gorgeous granulation. I really do like it. Then another granulating paint I really like, which is a newer one to me, is Schmincke's Cobalt Violet Hue and it's PV62. Oops, my circles are a bit all over the place. Next up is Schmincke's Tundra Pink. And this is one that I can have a go at mixing as well. I 
my favourite paper for showing off the quality of granulating paints is Canson XL cellulose paper. Out of all the watercolour papers I've tried, that one just, well, the paints just seem to granulate best on that. But I've actually run out at the moment. Tundra Pink is a mixture of PB29 and PR233. I'll use Schmincke's French Ultramarine for the PB29, just because that's the most granulating ultramarine blue that I've got. PR233 is Potter's Pink, and I'll use Roman Schmoll's version for that. I think I need a little bit more pink. Potter's Pink doesn't have strong tinting strength. There we go, that's more like it. A bit more water to play in. I've got to absolutely include a gallows and a turno. I just find this such a useful colour. It's my go to shadow colour at the moment. And now this is a mixture of PV, PB29, sorry, PR101 and PV19. Let's see if I can have a go at mixing that. So I'll use the Schmincke French Ultramarine again to give us our best shot at granulation. And then PR101, got a lot to choose from. I'll go for Daniel Smith's Indian Red. looking promising already and then the other pigment in the Naturno is PV19 it's quite close already I'll just try a little touch of Roman Schmoll's quinacridone violet okay let's try that And another of the purpley ones that I really like is Roman Schmoll's Shadow Violet. And this might be one we can mix as well. This is a mixture of PG50, PB29 and PV19. So that's the PG50. I've got a few, but this one is Roman Schmoll's Cobalt Teal. I'll stick with the Schmincke French Ultramarine again. And PV19. I'll just use the Roman Schmoll Quinacridone Violet again. Too purpley. Let's... That's quite a bit lighter, but we'll give that a go anyway. So next I'm going to include Schmincke's French Ultramarine in its own right. I'm 
as I said, it's the most granulating ultramarine or French ultramarine I've got. So it's not always suitable for everything that I want to use an ultramarine for. But if I want granulation, then that's the one I'll go for the most. I'll just show you in my swatch book the different ultramarines. So here's the Schmincke. You can see the level of granulation in that. And then going through Mijello Mission Gold, A Gallo, Quar, Daniel Smith, Rosa Gallery, and then the Snellier Ultramarine Deep is the least granulating one that I've got. And Roman Schmoll's Cobalt Deep Blue is pretty similar. Then I have to include Soda Light from Daniel Smith. I don't even use it loads or have much occasion to use it, but I just love it in its own right. The next one is Daniel Smith's Lunar Blue. This is one that seems to turn out differently every time I use it. I can never quite predict the final result of it. And it's a mixture of PBK11 and PB15. So for PBK11, I've got Aquarius Black or Lunar Black. I'll go for the Lunar Black. I've got Lunar Black in watercolour stick form only. But that's working great. I just chopped a section off and put it in a path pan. So the only one I've got of PB15 on its own is Rosa Gallery's Blue. Oh, oh. It might be slightly too dark, but we'll give that a go. Then I'd done this painting the other day, copying from a John Harrison painting out of his new book. And a couple of people had commented that the sky was a good kind of English about to drizzle kind of sky. And I'd used Schmincke's Haze Blue for it. So I'll paint that out and then I'll see if we can do a mix of it. The haze blue is a mixture of PY43. The only PY43 I've got is Roman Schmaltz Transparent Gold Ochre. And then PB29, I'll use Schmincke's French Ultramarine again. And then it had PBR7 in it as well. Now I've got a lot of PBR7s and some of them are quite dark. I'm just going to pop in a little bit of Cause raw rumba. Next up, I'm going to paint Schmincke's Deep Sea Green. I'm 
This is another one we can try mixing. It's PG18 and PB29. So the only PG18 I've got is Quartz Viridian Green. And I'll stick with Schmincke's French Ultramarine. Looks a little bit too blue. Okay, let's give that one a go. Then my next one is a single pigment one and it's PB28 and it's Roman Schmalz Cobalt Sea Blue. So not quite as green as the uh, PG50s. Cobalt Teals. And this is Daniel Smith's Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. And it's just a lovely gentle turquoise. So this painting I did on the beach on Friday, I used a few granulating colours. The turquoise in the sea here is the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. And then the shadow on the beach here is Noturno. I used Ultramarine to mix up the green. And then I used a couple of granulating colours in the rocks, which I'll include later today. So next is one of the colours that I'm hoping I'll use more often now that I've got my whole pans mixed into my big palettes. And this is Rosa Gallery's Chromium Oxide. It's PG17, single pigment. I don't have it in any other brands, so I haven't really got anything to compare it to. But I just think it's a lovely green. And then the paint that I get excited every time I go to use it. And that is Daniel Smith's Zoe Sight Genuine. And it's not even that particularly light green as a colour. But I just think it has the best granulation. And out of the Primatech colours from Daniel Smith, it actually re-wets pretty well. Next up, it's another one from Schmincke. And this is Forest Blue. And this is when we can have a gut mixing. So Forest Blue is PB36 and I've got that as Magello Mission Gold's Cobalt Green Deep and PBK11 which is the Aquarius Black or the Lunar Black. So there's the Cobalt Green Deep and I'm not sure which black to use. I used the Lunar Black for this one when I was trying to do the Lunar Blue but it's not very didn't really do very much. Whereas I know the Aquarius Black does crazy granulation. So let's see what happens with that one. Okay, let's give that a go. I think this is too turquoise, isn't it? It's not uh, looking green enough to match the forest blue. I'll show you all of these properly at the end for, to compare them.
Next up, I'm going to paint Roman Schmoor's Aquarius Green. Along with A. Gallo's Olive Green Deep and Daniel Smith's Undersea Green. I think these, this kind of green is absolutely my favourite green for painting foliage and everything. So let's see if we can make it. It's PY150. So I've got a few PY150s and I'm using Roman Schmoll's Nicolazo yellow, but they're all pretty similar, so I don't think it matters which. And PBR23, which in the Schmincke line is mahogany brown, and the only PBR23 I've got. And then it's PB29. So I'll go with Schmincker again, French Ultramarine. Oops, that's a bit too blue. That needs knocking back a bit, so I'll put a bit more brown in. That's more like it. I've not got the quite the right proportion of colours in that, but we'll see how it dries anyway. Now another paint which I haven't used a lot of because it's been tucked away in my Rosa Gallery palette is Rosa Gallery's Jade Green. And I'm quite excited to use this one a bit more really. It's almost like a mixture of zoisite and Aquarius green, that kind of green. Well, I think the name's a bit peculiar. Because I think of jade being more of a turquoisey green. And this is another one I can try mixing. It's PB28, PBK7 and PY42. So it's cobalt blue. I'll go for Mission Gold's cobalt blue number two. And PBK7, the only one of that I've got is Ivory Black from Magello Mission Gold. Oops, might be a bit much. And then PY42, I think the only one I've got for that is Magello Mission Gold's Yellow Ochre. Oh, not looking too bad. Sorry, I'm slightly off screen. And I've got to include Rembrandt's Dusk Yellow. This is just such a useful kind of shadow foliage colour. I guess I kind of use it instead of perylene greens because it's got that extra hint of warmth in it. And I'm not sure if this is one we can try mixing up. And it's PBK11 and PY128. So I don't know what PY128 is, but I'm looking at the sample close up and it looks like quite a cool yellow. I might just have a go at mixing a lemon yellow with the black and see what happens. So I'll go for the Aquarius black as well. I 
I just added a load more black there because it looked far too yellow. Then I've got another Rosa Gallery paint. And this is golden brown. Which looks a bit yucky when you put it down. And then when it dries, interesting things happen. And this is PY43 and PBR7. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to mix that. The only PY43 I've got is Roman Schmall's Transparent Golden Ochre, Gold Ochre. And it doesn't look too close to the colours in Golden Brown. But I'll just give it a go anyway. And then it's PBR7, which could be anything. So let's I'm going to need a fairly dark one to balance that out. I'm going to try Cypress Burnt Umber from Roman Schmore. There's a kind of black granulation in the golden brown though, which I don't think I'm going to achieve with this. I guess these aren't really granulating colours. No. I haven't really got a granulating PBR7. My next one is Roman Schmall's Van Dyke Brown. And I like this one because it's kind of like a more interesting sepia because of the granulation in it. And that's NBR8. And then I've got two greys next. And this first one is Schmincke's Shire Grey. Really, really, really like this grey. It's so nice for stone. And like slate roofs and things. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to mix it. It's got PY159 in it, which I haven't got. I guess I'll, I'll use an Indian yellow, PY153, but I have no idea how close that will be. And then it's got PB74, and the only PB74 that I've got is Roman Schmoll's Cobalt Deep Blue. And then it's got PBK11. I think I'm going to opt for the lunar black rather than the Aquarius black because it doesn't have such strong granulation. Oh, that might work. Let's have a look. That's actually not a million miles away. See what happens when it dries though. The second task one is one that I haven't used much yet. But again, it's another Rosa Gallery one. Which I'm hoping I use more now it's in the big palette. And this is Rosa Gallery's Cobalt Grey. I'm not sure I can mix this one. Let's have a look. PR108. Okay, so I have got one. And that's Cadmium, Quartz Cadmium Red Medium. And PB28. So this is Magello Mission Gold's Cobalt Blue number two. And then PBK11. 
Again, I'll use Daniel Smith Luna Black for that. Um, I think that's a bit blue. Oop, too far the other way now. All right, I'll give that a go. And then my very last one has got to be Daniel Smith's Hematite Genuine. It's just such a good rock colour and it just adds so much interest and texture kind of without too much effort on your part. So as I was saying with this picture from Friday all of this rock area here was hematite genuine as the base layer and then I could add an extra shadow and a little bit of colour from other paint. So as I say, I would have preferred to paint these on Canson XL watercolour paper because I think that brings out the granulation better. But these are some of my favourite granulating watercolours, ones which I think might well become my favourite and I've got better access to them. I'll just read through them again because I didn't put the brand names on. And I'll put links to the open stock paints for each brand in the description box down below. So Schmincke's Galaxy Pink, Roman Schmoll's Manganese Violet, Schmincke's Cobalt Violet Hue, Schmincke's Tundra Pink, A Gallo's Naturno, Roman Schmoll's Shadow Violet, Schmincke's French Ultramarine, Daniel Smith's Soda Light Genuine, Daniel Smith's Luna Blue, Schmincke's Haze Blue, Schmincke's Deep Sea Green, Roman Schmoll's Cobalt Sea Blue, Daniel Smith's Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine, Rosa Gallery's Chromium Oxide, Daniel Smith's Soy Sight Genuine, Schmincke's Forest Blue, Roman Schmoll's Aquarius Green, Rosa Gallery's Jade Green, Rembrandt's Dusk Yellow, Rosa Gallery's Golden Brown, Roman Schmoll's Van Dyke Brown, Schmincke's Shire Grey, Rosa Gallery's Cobalt Grey, and Daniel Smith's Hematite Genuine. And <laughs> I'd say we've got varying results from the homemade versions. Let's take a look. So, um, so the Galaxy Pink one turned out reasonably well. I mean, obviously, you can spend a lot longer getting the proportions of paints right or trying out different versions of the same pigment. Um, this was Tundra Pink. That's not too bad. You could try playing with different potter's pinks. I've used quite a pink potter's pink, if that makes sense. Then the Naturno attempt wasn't too bad. Hasn't quite got the darkness and depth to it, but it's not a million miles off. The Shadow Violet wasn't very good at all. You definitely needed more of the Cobalt Teal in it, at least. And my Luna Black was a total fail. I could perhaps try it with the more granulating Aquarius Black than with the Luna Black. And the Haze Blue, I actually made, sorry, it's these two here. When I tried it out the other day, I actually got a much better closeness than that. So I know that that one is actually possible. Then the deep sea green, I'm looking at these two. That's not too bad actually. I think you could probably get a fairly decent deep sea green. So this one is meant to be the forest blue. And 
I only had one version of the PB36 and I'm not sure if it's exactly the same shade. But I think most of my mixtures that have used PBK11 haven't turned out very well. Then the green is my Aquarius green attempt. I think I got a bit too much of the yellow in there. But I think you can make pretty decent dark olivey greens yourself by mixing your own ones. Then this was the jade green one. It's kind of along the right lines, but um, not fantastic. I'd ended up adding a bit of extra water to it because it had gone on too strong, so that might be some other problem. And then the dusk yellow attempt was a dismal failure. Yeah, the yellows, I've got either too much yellow or the wrong pigment. Well, I know I was using the wrong pigment, but too far away. Then my golden brown attempt, the next one along on both rows, wasn't very good at all. I don't have a granulating PBR7, so I don't know what was used in the golden brown, but it looks like um, a much darker and granulating brown. Then, okay. So this one here is supposed to be Shire Grey. Um, can we see that? I sort of got the right mix of colours, but they're just not. They've kind of separated out more than in the actual Shire Grey. And then, yeah, I've got it's too blue. This was meant to be the cobalt grey here. I don't think that was at all successful. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my favourite granulating colours. I like having them as convenience colours for when I'm feeling lazy and just want to go straight to them and have it as a reliable mix. But it is quite fun having a go at mixing some of your own. Please let me know if there's any granulating colours you especially like or if you've been able to make good homemade versions of them. I just think it's a really fun experiment. Thanks ever so much for watching anyway. I hope you enjoyed that. Bye!